Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Joe Brown and Tommy Cooleen joining you from the Charlotte Regionals here in North Carolina. North Carolina, the home of the Tar Heels and Michael Jordan. So we had our little uh, pregame shoot around that we had, but <laughs> now we are ready for round one action. We have two days uh, here in Charlotte. Eight rounds, I believe it is, right? For, for, for day so, one. Yeah. So eight rounds, and then of course tomorrow, all of the top cup top cut action you could possibly want and or need but our round one matchup is justin ramirez versus kazuki kani uh kani kani hira excuse me not Hara. uh Ka kazuki is he goes to school locally in north carolina so he's a little more local than justin who is a a, a northeast new york new jersey based player uh but both of these players have really strong potential yeah uh, kazuki last year cut the georgia regional champions i I believe that was his first regional, so uh, he has done well in the past at the few events he has attended. Uh, Justin Ramirez doesn't have the big uh, regionals results, he's looking for those still, but um, still does very, very well locally at the New York, New Jersey events, so uh, definitely a very respectable player, has won a few of our events, so um, definitely something to look out for. They're both like really, really strong players. Maybe not players that uh, everybody has heard of from like around the U.S., around the world, but uh, two very strong players nonetheless. Yeah, and uh, as our as our players are finding each other in game, so they're getting set up for this round one match. I was talking with Justin earlier, um, and he said he had a, a, he has said he had a little change of heart last second. And while he was here filling out his team sheet, faced the dilemma. He was like, "No, I'm going to switch it up and go with my original gut." He was worried. He was telling me he had a he had a team that was prepared uh, for Charlotte, and then Intimidate Incineroar came out. So he spent the last week with his friends trying to build around it. But he's going. He decided at the venue he's going back to tried and true and something he's comfortable with instead of trying to mix it up last second. Yeah, absolutely. That team building group there from New Jersey. All those guys are uh, uh, good comrades with each other, and uh, there is something they love. They love their Como. <laughs> <laughs> so this might be uh, at least. To my knowledge, one of the first times we actually see Kamo'o on a North American regional stream. I know uh, Marcus Satter did got second place at a regional, right, in, in Europe. But we haven't seen much success for the clangy boy in North America. Yeah, I think it's a very strong archetype, and I think a lot of people have kind of slept on it still to this point in the season. Uh, it does have, of course, it's very apparent issues. It has a very bad fairy weakness. Uh, it's four times weak to fairy, which means that pretty much any special or physical fairy move is going to knock it out, um, given the right situation. Of course, uh, that's why it's paired with things like you know redirection, either a fairy or a moongus. A lot of times you see it paired with mega Gengar because Gengar can trap in those fairies with the shadow tag ability, and then go for sludge bombs and uh, pick up knockouts that way. I am usually more interested in not like when I see a Como team when I'm going against it on Battle Spot, not necessarily the Como because I know what it's up to. It's got it. It's got the Z move. It, you know, I know what that objective is. I'm more interested in those supportive Pokemon that it has. Mega Charizard versus Mega Gengar, uh, Tapu Bulu, you know, may, depending on what type of what type of set is the Tapu Bulu running, uh, if it has any other support like Whimsicott or a Fake Out supporter. I know early on Seijun was a uh, proponent of Pachirisu Como just because that's who, that's who Seijun is. But I, I like, I'm not so much worried about Como because I always have a fairy type or a fairy type attack and it's four times weak to it, but the the teammates are really what makes the Como team strong. And that we can go into team preview here. Round one at the Charlotte Regionals 2018, Justin Ramirez has a team of Whimsicott, Como O, Gengar, Tapu Bulu, Celesteela, and Incineroar as Kazuki Kanehira has Tapu Koko, Charizard, Landorus, Therian, Cresselia, Snorlax, and Conkeldur. Yeah, Conkeldur is not a Pokemon we see too much of, but uh, I know a bunch of people have been talking about it. It is one of those really, really bulky fighting types that you know uh, has access to a bunch of those like, cool support moves like Wide Guard, which is really nice. It uh, has a bunch of good abilities in Iron Fist, has Guts that has Sheer Force, so um, all those are used with uh, different moves, but are all really cool abilities nonetheless. Um, Justin has to figure out how he's going to deal with that Como. Usually we see, you know, if they have double fairy, then they can, you know, block out the, you know, the Klingar Soul Blaze by having both of the attacks going into fairy types and just cancels out the attack. But uh, since he doesn't have that, he's going to have to find other ways to do so, whether it be through uh, Dazzling Gleam from Tapu Koko, maybe Psychic from Cresselia, just figuring out how he's going to be dealing with that Koko and getting around the Gengar, which wants to stop him from doing so. I'm, I'm so excited right now. I've been 
waiting months. I know all of us have. Ever since Worlds 2017, when they announced Como's brand new Z move that it was going to be getting in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and this is one of the first times I'm seeing at such a uh, high competitive stage. So Justin Ramirez on the bottom of your screen has Gengar and Whimsicott as Kazuki Kanahira on the top of your stream or on the top of your screen is leading Landorus and Snorlax. Yeah. So with these Gengar Whimsicott leads, you have a very pivotal turn one because once Shadow Tag activates on the Mega Evolution, you can no longer switch out. And uh, while Landorus is usually something that does carry something like U-Turn, uh, can just offensively deal with the Gengar through something like Earthquake. Uh, you have to be very careful. A lot of times, the Whimsicott Gengar player will just go for something like Double Protect on turn one to lock in your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, and then, you know, Whimsicott has tools like uh, Encore. Gengar has tools like Disable. And you're just trying to disrupt your opponent's strategy. And then once you get into a safe spot, then you start firing off attacks and trying to pick up knockouts. It's, some, it's two Pokemon that really, in this format, are more supportive. Of course, Mega Gengar has a ridiculously high special attack, uh, but you use it for the that Encore Disable combination that you were mentioning, or more importantly, Shadow Tag. If there's something that is locked in that can't handle the Kamoa when it comes in, uh, the uh, your opponent's just in a really bad spot. But no switch outs here from either player on turn one. The Justin Ramirez will Mega Evolve. His Gengar now has Shadow Tag, so no Pokemon can switch out. They have to switch out via U-Turn or Volt Switch, anything like that. Whimsicott and Gengar both protect. So Justin scouting out anything that Kazuki has. Landers with a protect, so not Choice Scarf. Big information for Justin. You always want to know on turn one what the Landers is up to. Snorlax, return into Whimsicott's protect, so no damage there. The only real big reveal is that Landers is not Choice Scarf. Yeah, and with that protect, it's also not a Salt Fest, which means right. the, most, the next most likely item is likely the easy move. Uh, and that's a problem if you're Justin, because you can go for an Encore and lock that Landers in to protect, but the uh, Ground DMC would potentially go through that uh, that Encore and still be able to take out the Gengar. So there's not to play this turn very, very carefully. It might seem just like an obvious play to just go for an Encore on the Landers, but you please have a big risk if you do so. Whimsicott going first, thank, of course, thanks to that Prankster ability. Uh, fake Tears will lower Landorus' special defense. And Gengar, a special attacker, Shadow Ball into Landorus, no Assault Vest. Landorus is knocked out with a one-hit knockout. Snorlax, something that Kazuki could have potentially went for last turn, of course, might get locked into Encore, is the, is the Belly Drum bringing its attack all the way as high as it possibly can be at the cost of half of its HP. But... Snorlax doesn't care because it eats its eye of berry and goes all the way back up to full health. Yeah, so Justin identifying there that, you know, you can't go for Encore. You are very, very weak to the Z-move. Just go and deal with it offensively. Just go for Big Tears Shadow Ball. Pick up the knockout on that Landorus. Since you know it's not a soft vessel, it's very, very unlikely that Landorus is going to take that Shadow Ball. As we do see the Crest come in here. And uh, now, if you're uh, Kazuki, you're still in a, a very interesting spot compared to last turn because you can get, you know, Encore because you just went for Belly Drum. Um, Ally Switch from Cresselia is something we've been seeing uh, very, very commonly with Snorlax, so Kazuki might try and go for something like an ally switch to try and catch an Encore onto the Cresselia slot instead of the Snorlax, but um, because of how common the pairing is, this might be something that Justin is predicting, so we might have a bit of a mind game this turn. Yeah, he has to decide if he, uh, and even if, even if the Cresselia goes for something like Trick Room so that Snorlax is faster, that could potentially get Encored as well from, from the Whimsicott, so he, could put, so he could have to keep Trick Rooming every turn, so this is a big turn for Kazuki. If he does have on, uh, if he does have ally switch, that would be uh, a great turn to go for, but he doesn't. Snorlax is encored into Belly Drum, so even though its attack is so huge, it's not going to do anything. The Shadow Ball goes into the Snorlax, uh, so I think Justin was actually predicting an ally switch play as Cresselia will use his Trick Room. So now, even if it does get encored, there is at least one turn where Snorlax is faster. Yeah, so we saw a really safe play there from uh, Justin. He went for Whimsicott uh, encore into the Snorlax as well as the Shadow Ball, just so if ally switch did happen, you can go for Shadow Ball into Cresselia, hopefully pick up the 2KO on that because it would have just gone for allies, which wouldn't have been a trick when it would have been in a very good spot. But, you know, Snorlax locked into Belly Drum is like all you can ask for here for Justin. It can't switch out because of the uh, Shadow Tag ability. So uh, Justin's in the driver's seat right now. Whimsicott with another Encore on to Cresselia now. So now Snorlax is into uh, is locked into Belly Drum and Cresselia is locked into Trick Room. It cannot use any other attacks for uh, a couple of turns. There is another Trick Room. The Twisted Dimensions will return to normal. The worst Trick Room <laughs> that I've ever seen. Nothing happened there. No, not able to take advantage of it. And Shadow Ball does over half to Cresselia. It gets a special defense drop, but from what we saw, how much the first one did, that drop didn't matter. Yeah, and at this point, Justin's 
free to just go for another Shadow Ball into the Cresselia if he wants to pick up a knockout there. Uh, he'll bring it down to just a Snorlax. And you know, when Snorlax eventually does run out of you know uh, the Encore turns and can attack again, uh, Justin will just go for another Encore and keep it locked into that Belly Drum. So. Um, Justin's in the driver's seat right now. He's in a pretty safe spot. Uh, if the last Pokemon on the back potentially, you know, stop the Women's from moving, that might help. But um, looking at uh, uh, Kazuki's team, I don't think he has anything to really stop the Women's Cut. Women's Cut with the tail and all these supportive moves. Still haven't seen an attack from it, but that's not what Women's uh game really is. It does help out the rest of its team with the tail and Shadow Ball knocking out Cresselia. Uh, so Cresselia goes down. It would have had to go for Trick Room anyway. And Snorlax stuck with another Belly Drum. But finally, that Encore has ended, so he can he is free to go for or attempt to go for another attack this turn as Kazuki brings in his Tapu Koko, which. Uh, depending on how our players have trained their Pokemon, has has to hope is faster than Justin's Mega Gengar, but it won't be after Tailwind. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Justin's not going uh, going for anything except for the Encore here into the Snorlax, which is a safe play, make sure that that uh, plus six Snorlax could not attack either of his Pokemon. Um, if it has something like Protect and Tapu Koko has something like Taunt, maybe he can Protect and Taunt the Whimsicott, but no, we're going to see him forfeit. Uh, likely uh, either wanting to just conserve information uh, or just not maybe not having an out at all. Right, the match, it was forfeited, and so Justin won 4-2 there, but uh, Kazuki wasn't even able to, to land a single HP of damage in that entire set because, or in that entire game one, because of Whimsicott and Gengar support. So we were excited for, for Como, but... Justin didn't even need it in game one. His his Pokemon weren't even harmed. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see that uh, that Como is almost best brought in the back because they want to be able to you know lock problematic Pokemon for Como uh, into a position that you can you know, deal with them very efficiently and then bring the Como in and win the game that way. Um, since if you're able to like your opponent has to lead. Um, answers to the Como, because if they don't, they're just going to get run over by Clanger Soul Blaze, and it'll boost all over them, and uh, they have no way to come back from it, so they have to respect it on Team Preview, and because of that, the Gengar and Whimsicott is just so strong as a lead, uh, because it's very, very easy to abuse your opponent if they're not in an ideal situation. I wonder what Kazuki can do, because Snorlax is a Pokemon that he really needs to take advantage of the Belly Drum and get his attack as high as possible, but Whimsicott will just stop it every time it goes for it, so it has to be at, uh, at neutral attack. It Game, the Snorlax is not, it can't afford the risk of going for a belly drum when you can just get encored into Oblivion. So, game two, Justin Ramirez up 1 0, and there's an adjustment. The clangorous boy himself in Komo O with Incineroar is the lead for Justin, and Kazuki has an adjustment also with Charizard and Snorlax. Yeah, this is almost a free fake out and clangor soul blaze for Justin. Uh, you might be fearing something like either a belly drum or a, uh, a tailwind from the Charizard, so uh, either slot uh, I think you can go for a fake out on. Um, Snorlax is the one that can more offensively deal with the Como, but if you're afraid of something like Tapu Koko coming in the back in Tailwind, you might uh, want to pick up the Charizard just to deny that Tailwind and then potentially KO the Charizard next turn so it can never get off that Tailwind. Right, that's definitely the big. That Kazuki, it seems like Kazuki's answer is that Charizard with a Tailwind, with or even just doing more damage than uh, than than the Landorus was able to. But Landorus will switch in here with this Intimidate, lowering Incineroar and Komo's attack by one stage. Incineroar will fake out into Snorlax, no Belly Drum, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful who you call ugly in middle school, because <laughs> Komo is back in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon with its very own special Z move in Clangorous. Soul Blaze. Yeah, so this is going to be a plus one boost to all of Como's major stats, and uh, that's going to be a huge problem for Kazuki now, since this is a spread move. We're not even going to have to worry about who this is going to target, so uh, this is probably going to do around 40% of that Snorlax, probably around uh, you know, 60, 70, 80% of that Landorus, since we know it is not the Assault this variant, so uh, a pretty free... Uh, 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 what's the move? The cl uh, Clanging Scales the next turn. Right, uh, that spread move, right, right, right. Yeah, you can just go for that pretty freely, and uh, you just worry about maybe what the Snorlax went for this turn. So, of course, that Clangor Soul Blaze is a spread move. It's a dragon type, so a counter to it is a fairy type Pokemon. The only fairy that uh, Kazuki has is Tapu Koko, not on the field right now. But with such a huge boost, Justin is locking in. He knows what his game plan is. He's you know picking very early on. Uh, he just knows now that his every one of his stats are boosted except for attack since it was lowered by Landorus. That's at neutral. That's not really what Justin is worried about. As Snorlax switches out into Cresselia, Kazuki hoping that his Cresselia can take uh, the clinging scales better 
than the Snorlax can. Lander is protecting yet again as Como -O does use cl clanging scales into Lander's protect. No damage, but it, let's see how much Cresselia. It is very big on his special defenses, and it doesn't even bring it into the yellow. So it could potentially uh, take two, but Incineroar with the not most common tech, but not unbelievable to see a taunt on uh, Incineroar. And that does make sense with Justin's team composition because he doesn't want anything to stop Como. Yes, yeah, so now Clanging Scales can just, uh, you know, fire off at both of these Pokemon. It's going to definitely dip, definitely pick up a knockout on the Landers if it does stay in. Uh, Cresselia is going to take a lot of damage and it can't go for any of its uh, key support moves. It's going to have to fire off something like an Ice Beam or a Psychic into the Como and uh, maybe even at this point just potentially hope for a crit. Psychic is, it is super effective, but it's not going to do that much because most trainers don't invest into uh, Cresselia's special attack. Snorlax switching in on that Landorus slot. Neither Pokemon being knocked down to the red. It does lower Kamo's defense, though, uh, as Snorlax will eat its Ayapapa Berry that we saw back in Game 1. Cresselia with a super effective Psychic onto the wrong stat. Was hoping it was more Psy Shock after the defense drop, but does do half as Incineroar with pretty much a free knockoff on that turn definitely takes out Cresselia. If it had one of the 50% berries, which it does, it has Wiki Berry, it was so close, maybe a couple of HP off from actually activating it. Yeah, at this point in the game, you have to be very, very worried about your Como potentially taking a hit from the Snorlax. So Justin's probably going to uh, try and target down that Snorlax, try and pick up a knockout uh, before it can get an attack off. It already eaten its berry, did not recycle, so um, two attacks might be able to do it. We have to remember Incineroar is still at minus one from that initial Intimidate from the Landorus, so um, a combination of Clanger and Soul Blaze plus something like a Flare Blitz might not pick up the knockout, but uh, you might just go for him just in, if you're Justin, or just go for a pretty safe switch. Incineroar switching out will be able to recycle later on that Fake Out and the Intimidate as Whimsicott switching into that slot. Kazuki down to his last two Pokemon here in round one. Charizard will Mega Evolve, turning into the Charizard Y variant. Uh, will set up the Drought, or will set up the Sun, thanks to its Drought ability, boosting all of its Fire-type attacks. kamo -O protecting on this turn. What does Snorlax go for? Charizard will Heat Wave a Spread Damage, or Spread Attack, does connect successful. There is that chance to miss, but it does bring Whimsicott down to its focus sash. Is there a burn? That would really be nice for Kazuki, and he does get a burn, so that focus sash didn't matter uh, because at the end of the turn, Whimsicott will be going down thanks to burn, and Snorlax's return went into Kamo-O's protect. This might actually not be the worst thing in the world if you are Justin. You get a free switch back into your Incineroar now, and now you have Fake Out pressure. So now, uh, Justin can go for something like Fake Out and Clanging Scales, and uh, maybe not pick up a knockout on Charizard order Snorlax, uh, but, but definitely put them both into range of potentially taking a, another Clanger or Soul Blaze. You have to question though, is the Como uh, in range of both Heat Wave and Return? If that is the case, then uh, it might just be going down here to something, uh, to either one of those attacks, and you can only stop one of them if you are Justin, unless you're able to, you know, pick up a knockout on uh, either Snorlax or Charger with one of your other moves on Como. But even if uh, so, even if Como goes down, he you know did a great job. He got a lot of knockouts, uh, or he got the one knockout on Cresselia and brought Landers down to just a little bit of health. It's not Choice Scarf, so you can potentially outspeed it with your Mega, or you will outspeed it with your Mega Gengar. Uh, but Charizard does protect, as does the uh, as the Snorlax. But what I was saying, so this Fake Out or the Clinging Skill is going to go into both for both players protects, and Fake Out will do the same thing. But what I was saying is Incineroar can take advantage. It doesn't go for the fake out. That's what I was saying, or, or was thinking. Because Charizard set up the sun, that actually, by by product, in increases Incineroar's attack, and the Flare Blitz is probably enough for a knockout on Snorlax. Right, yeah, very, sa uh, very safe play to go for if you're Justin. You can just go for the same thing again this turn. Uh, you have to imagine he probably has something like the Gengar on the back, and if that is the case, uh, you just want to make sure that uh, hopefully something like a Tailwind does not go up, but uh, at this point in the game, I don't think Kazuki can afford to spend a turn Tailwinding. He needs to take out that Como as soon as possible. Charizard switching out into Landorus, so it just has barely any HP, but it will have another Intimidate, and this might be the difference uh, that Snorlax would need to survive a Flare Blitz from that slot. Kamo'o 
with a protect this turn. Doesn't want to take a return. And Incineroar Flare Blitz with the Sun Boost into Snorlax. How much will it do? It is high on damage, and yeah, it's so it's not even not even close for a knockout. We'll take a little bit of recoil and Snorlax's return into the protect. Yeah, and now that Snorlax is definitely in the range of any combination of attacks from Komo plus the Incineroar. Komo almost certainly goes for a Clanging Scales here, and uh, if that does not pick up the knockout, since it looks like it's pretty close, but probably just outside of range, Incineroar would definitely clean it up with some like either a Flare Blitz or a knockoff at this point. Uh, you probably just go for Flare Blitz, it'll do even more damage to the Charizard in the back, because that stun still is up. Right, it, it seems like Kazuki's just in a really bad spot, especially after he helped set up the sun, um, which we didn't see uh, in game one. Kazuki brought Tapu Koko instead of Charizard as his fourth Pokemon, so this was a nice adjustment for Justin. Of course, he might have had Incineroar in the back of the game when we never saw it, but to lead Incineroar and have that fake out pressure right away and get a boost from the sun. Clanging Scales goes into Snorlax's Protect, will knock out Landorus, so... The, uh, again, Como's defense is lowering every turn. The only thing they can hit defensively is Snorlax, but it has to protect every turn as Flare Blitz goes into that protect. Now Kazuki brings Charizard back and down to his final two Pokemon. Yeah, Charizard uh, still at very, very high HP, if not full. Yes, yeah, still at full. Um, so Clanging Scales can put it into range of potentially whatever's in the back. Maybe the Gengar's uh, Shadow Ball or Sludge Bomb, if that is the Gengar in the back. Um, a combination of attacks still will just knock out the Snorlax. So you probably just take the knockout where you can. Uh, your, your Incineroar almost definitely lives the turn. Uh, and then you can you know, bring on your Gengar, have Gengar and Incineroar alone against that Charizard, which uh, will almost certainly have taken uh, at least one turn of playing skills ship damage. Yeah. Just Justin's game plan really doesn't need to change that much here. Just clanging scales and flare blitz, which as of right now looks like what he's going for. Clanging scales into Snorlax, knocks it out, brings Charizard down to pretty much exactly half of its HP. And how much does a flare a flare blitz in the sun do? Maybe we'll find out. But an overheat from Charizard into Komo'o will not even be enough for a knockout. And the players uh, taking their headsets off, seeming like they understand that this one is about to be wrapped up as Flare Blitz in uh, brings Charizard down to around 30%. Not a lot of recoil. Sun does go down, so a Flare Blitz would do even less at this point. Maybe just going for a neutral knockoff, even though it doesn't have an item. Would be better. But Justin, of course, just click clanging scales and shake hands. Yep. Uh, come up with that speed boost to uh, put in a lot of work this game. Going to outspeed uh, pretty much the entirety of Kazuki's team. Uh, in game one, he did not see the Como, so you know maybe he thought he can maybe lead a little bit better to handle the Gengar Whimsic Hot mode. Leads the Charizard and the Snorlax. Just didn't end up working because he did lead the Como. And uh, like we said, you have to respect Como at team preview. And if you go into a game and you don't bring uh, you know answers to that Como, it can just you know set up turn one. And if you're not able to stop it right then and there, uh, it's just too much to overcome sometimes. Unfortunately for Kazuki, uh, a resounding win for Justin in round one. It really is tough. Kamoa, once he gets once he gets rolling, uh, especially even in game one with the Whimsicott Gengar, when you're you just make one one prediction, and if it doesn't work your way, you're in such a, a negative spot. Uh, but we know no Kinkelder. That would have been would have been nice to see. But I still am happy that we saw uh, Kamoa on stream as early as round one today, and it one it makes me wonder if since he was building with his friends. Maybe other players here in Charlotte are running a similar Komoo team. Yeah, uh, I think it's a really strong team. Maybe uh, you know, Conklador can come to uh, future rounds, maybe play some Snorlaxes today, have a good time that way. But um, for now, Justin's just going to take a really nice 1 -0 win, uh, 2 0 win uh, with Komoo. Really just a strong Pokemon. So, congrats to Justin Ramirez. And remember, just shows trust your gut, ladies and gentlemen, because Justin was uh, thinking of running something different to prepare for the meta, but decided to go with what he was comfortable with, and it helped him out in game one or in round one. So we will be right back with a player interview with Justin Ramirez, uh, and we will see you soon here on Battle Factory.
and welcome back Pokemon trainers I am joined by round one winner Justin Ramirez congratulations how are you feeling how's Charlotte been going so far did you wake up at 5 a.m. were you able to get good sleep let me fill me in man um yeah I got a good night's rest so uh, like we just chilled in the room and had a good time um I didn't have a team really this morning so like last minute my friends helped me out and they uh, got me the squad and that's what I used on stream as you guys saw and uh, it was all right. It went so, good. So yeah. you, were, you were telling me that you were kind of going back and forth when you got here on what to play. And you decided uh, to go with the original gut with this Como team. So what – I know you, you work you work with your friends in team building. What yeah. is so strong about the Komo O core with Gengar and Whimsica and Boo, all this stuff? Uh, you, pretty much throughout, since Ultra Sun and Moon started, the, it's had a lot of similar Pokemon on that team of six. So why does it work so strongly? Uh, I just want to shout out real quick Case for uh, building the team. Uh, I think the team like works really well because like the only thing that really touches Como after it gets a boost is Tapus. So um and like this team has like a lot of options like Gengar, Bulu, Selly to deal with Tapus. So it's like it's pretty simple in that um like in that formula I guess like the way it works. But um it's pretty effective like as you saw I guess. So in, in game one, you, you did a great job. You, you know, Tommy and I were talking about how your Pokemon didn't even take damage at all in yeah. game one. Like you were at full health, you had all four Pokemon. Um, so when you see Landorus, Landorus can obviously hit Gengar for super effective damage. One of my big struggles I have as a player, and I know a lot of other people probably do too, is trying to guess what item or what type of Landorus you're going up against. So... After you saw Protect, obviously, it's not Saw Vest. It's not Choice Scarf, so it's probably yeah, a Yeah, that's why. Right. But on yeah. turn one, as a player, how do you, how do you in your head, try to figure out what type of Landorus is the worst possible option for him? Um, well, I mean, I think for this team, it, it might be Scarf. Um, his E-move can be a little annoying, too. But I think, like, for any team, like, you have the terrain to, like, scout the Intimidate or whatever. Um, for this team, that's why I double protected turn one. I was, gonna I was ask just like, that, I just, yeah. I just need to see like what it does. Like, and when he protected, I was like, okay, might go down to Shadow Ball plus Fake Tears. So, um, that was nice to see. Like when I saw that, I was pretty relieved. Um, and yeah, I guess that's how I deal with Lando. Just like double protect, scout it out. Uh, Blue is helpful too. Like I can switch it in, right. and take the hit Earth anyway. So, yeah. Um, the 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 fake tears Shadow Ball combination. That's pretty cool. I know a lot of a lot of Whimsicott's have problems with. You know, needing more than four moves at once. So yeah. you, you were able to find room on your team for fake tears with Whimsicott. So I'm not asking you anything else you had. No, it's But fine. Uh, I'm yeah. saying, how did you decide? Is it because Gengar's special attack is so huge? Like, that's the most efficient option to um, have fake tears? Or what was the decision behind running uh, that type of Whimsicott? Uh, it's really good with Como. Like, it helps you sweep a little easier. But yeah, with Gengar, it's just like, I mean, as you saw, like, I was just picking things off. I didn't really need to use it against the Crest, but... Um, if Crest were to come in like turn one, I could have just faked your Shadow Balled it. Um, and like, it gets rid of the threats that uh, are annoying for Gengar. Really, besides like Incineroar, um, which this team kind of struggles with, but you know, I didn't face it, so. So, how are you enjoying BGC 18 so far? We're, we're a couple months in at that, this point. We had we had a, me a meta developing, a lot of Metagross, a lot of Lele. Now we're going to see a lot of Inc Incineroar and Landers combined together. Uh, what are you enjoying about this format early on? Um, I don't know, I'm like having a hard time like, I guess, adjusting to it from last year. Like last year everything was like super like, you can almost kind of like formulate a team specifically for like certain archetypes that were like already like defined. Um, there wasn't really like too much to work with. So in this format, like everything can be useful, I guess, like to some degree. Um, so I am struggling a little bit. Like I'm trying to find like the most consistent team. Um, and that's why I like this team because like you can just trap stuff in. You don't have to like worry about switches, and uh, that's really nice. Yeah, you were picking yeah. you were picking moves pretty quickly. Like uh, we even noted that you you understood your win condition, and you know like, it seems like you have experience with Como teams, and you yeah. like you just know okay when he does this, I do this. Like you didn't you don't really take a lot of time in between turns. So that's that. Is that your general play style, or is that just because you're experienced with this uh, team composition? No, that is actually my play style. Um, yeah, usually I do pick my moves pretty quick. That's something I got to work on. You know, you get 60 seconds. I don't really only take like 20. But um, with this team, yeah, I just like I understood the matchup. Like when I saw it, I was like, okay, this team like is kind of weak to Como. Um, as long as I get that rolling, like I should be fine. And so that's why I was just like, if I just click playing scales a bunch, like something's gonna probably take a hit. So. Are yeah. there any uh, are there any underrated Pokemon that you really haven't seen too much? Of, like you know maybe you can't find you can't find a spot on it in your team when you're when you're building teams, but you'd like to use it. Like um, uh, are there like things that maybe people should give a shot at home? Uh, right now, 
I think my loader's cool. Um, it's like it's hard to fit on a team, as you said, but like my loader's cool. Um, Bishar Blaze is like annoying to play against. I don't know for me personally. Like I was struggling with that a lot last night. That's why like I changed teams. I was just like, if this happens to show up, like this is gonna be rough. Um, but yeah, so like those two, like anything that uh, deters intimidate is really cool right now because a lot of teams are going towards like double intimidate. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I I wish for for the for your best of luck. Hope you don't run into those Alrighty. those uh, troubles you have. Quick, one word answer. Who's the best tapu? Uh, one word. Lele. Lele. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay, you hear it here. We're gonna we're gonna ask everybody. We we need to have this definitive answer. I know all four are viable. You know, parents always say I love all my children e equally. That's nonsense. Clearly, mm -hmm. clearly there has to be one supreme tapu, and we're gonna get to the bottom of this That's throughout really. this format. But thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. And uh, best of luck throughout the rest thank of the round. Yeah, here shout out Charlie. PB by the way. All right, there you go. We'll be right back. Uh, as soon as round two starts with your next match. Prices for Pokemon cards have been red hot lately. Cards that used to be just game pieces have become valuable collectibles. At the center of this Pokemon explosion is PSA. Collectors trust PSA to ensure their cards are secure and their collections are protected. For help achieving the highest prices for your Pokemon collection, choose PSA. Your card is safe, secure, and as recent